Hey there and welcome to a brand new Blender tutorial where I'm going to show you how to get images like this onto your glass object. So without any further ado, let's hop straight into it by making a new scene, deleting everything. And I'm not going to do any modeling here, I'm just going to show you how to do the basic thing. Uh, you can see a video on how to model the actual glass down in the description below. And uh, yeah, without any further ado, I'm going to hop into the shading workspace. Uh, go to my asset browser and basically I have a glass already pre-made so we do not waste any time on that as I said if you need a tutorial on how to do this you can find it down below so this yet doesn't have any materials applied to it or anything like that uh, I'm just going to give it a subdivision surface modifier so it doesn't look as choppy something like this and now I need to unwrap it because I haven't done that before. So I'm going to hide this. That's not going to take very long. If you do not know what UV unwrapping is, it's basically the art of uh, making a 3D object appear in a 2D plane so that you can put to the images like textures on it. Something like this. That'll do something fast and fine that should be good enough so yeah uh, let's go to shading again get a new material I'm going to call this cup you can leave it material one if you want to so I'm going to get this uh, principal PSDF I'm going to delete it get a glass PSDF and plug it in here uh, if you don't know how to just plug it in by clicking on it, by Control shift clicking on it, you can go to Edit, Preferences, search for Node Wrangler. It's a very useful add-on, I will use it later in the video. Uh, again, so I suggest you enable this. So now, next up, I'm going to get a PNG, which I found on the internet and totally have not stolen, uh, and plug it into the roughness. And right off the bat, you can see nothing really happened because I haven't unwrapped it. I just marked the seams. So I'm going to go to the UV editing, select everything, press U, unwrap. And now the scaling is all over the place. Uh, we can't really see what we're doing. We get some streaks over here but that basically doesn't tell us much. So I'm going to plug this into the color for a second so that we can actually see what we are dealing with. So right now I'm going to press A here and here. So we have everything selected. Press S, scale this up. And I know that this here is my outside because I have many more loops on the outside than on the inside. And this here would therefore be the inside of the mesh. I'm going to place my outside something like this here should do fine. I'm going to leave more space towards the bottom then towards the top and now one of these copies here i'm going to show you one of these copies here is the original one you can see it's all over the place right now which we don't want so you can go to this repeat function here and set it to clip so now you can see this is the actual one which we will be dealing with so now we want to set this here as the roughness and right off the bat you can see it's not really that strong also when you're dealing with roughness and normal data and everything like that which we will be dealing with later i would suggest putting the color space into a non-color which you can see messes up the roughness as well so one way to fix this would be to plug it into a mix rgb like this just put the color from the texture into color 2 and put the alpha into the factor. Right now, you can see that the whole glass is kind of rough. So we can change this by going here onto the color one, clicking and go from RGB to HSV and put the value to 0 0.01, which gives the whole glass 0.1 or 1% roughness. So now if we are not satisfied with how rough this is here, we can import a color ramp. So color ramp, Plug, uh, plug it in between here and by adjusting the white slider you can get it to be more rough by pulling it towards the center or getting it less rough by putting by pulling the black one towards the center but yeah i will be 
pulling this here just slightly something like this here should be fine. I want some streakiness, some detail in the roughness, because as you can see, Control Shift click on it with the Node Wrangler add-on. Uh, at some point, when you overdo it, it just becomes white all, all the way. You don't get any detail. So I want to preserve some detail and this you should do fine. So now let's put in some bump information. So I will duplicate this mix shader by shift uh, by shift D. And now I'm going to plug the color into this here. And this here I will basically make fully black. Now the alpha into the factor, the color into the normal. And now you can see this looks weird. Why is this pixelated? Well, it's pixelated because we are plugging a yellow output into a uh, purple input, which we shouldn't do. So one way to convert it would be by pressing Shift A, search, and then bump, and plugging this here into the height. So now this this here converts the uh, yellow into the blue output, and uh, that should be fine. So now I'm going to make a distance of 0.001 and this here just gives me a very very slight bumpiness to it if you want you can go a little bit higher like 0.005 which would give you a stronger bump but uh it's not really recommended i will keep it at this here so and this here is by the way in meters so this would be a one millimeter race uh so uh, now let's color this, but before we color it, I'm going to just enable this here, import a camera, so press Shift A, camera, Alt G and Alt R to reset the rotation and location, R, X, 90 to rotate it by 90 degrees along the X axis, number pad 0 to enter the camera view, G, Y, and just pull it backwards a little bit, pull it upwards a little bit on the X axis, I'm going to change the aspect ratio as well, now that's many informations but none of them are really relevant to the tutorial and rather more to the look of this which you can experiment with yourself uh, for the focal length i like uh, 105 millimeters i think that's very pleasant for product shots like this and i'm going to rotate this so select the glass r z and then just rotate it until you get something you like i'm going to import an hdri which is basically background lighting so go to the world tab open hdri or whatever folder that you set this to and then just get one you can get one online now in eevee this here will look stupid because uh eevee is not really good at rendering glass and it will just look like this so like a whole bunch of nothing so i suggest putting this here or going to the render engine setting it to cycles Control b for border select and then just drag it over here so we don't render any X's, which we do not need. So, now this looks a whole bunch better. So A, R, Z to rotate everything. And I'm going to rotate this until I get a lighting situation, which I like. Something like this. I like how the backdrop lighting affect the petals here of the flower. So, now I'm going to give this bottom here texture. You don't need to do that. I'm just going to do that because I already have my materials uh, pre-composed here. If it would be displaying it, something like this. So now we want to color this, right? So how do we do that? Well, we could just plug the color into the color, but then you would see the glass is black. So one way to fix this would be to get another mix node or mix, uh, mix RGB node, plugging the color into the color 2 socket and putting this here to absolutely white so value 1 and setting the alpha to the factor and that basically does the trick so now I want some depth of field so I'm going to just click somewhere where I want the focus to be shift a get a, a an empty something like this and go to the camera again camera and depth of field now everything is blurry in the focus object we will select the empty and now you can play with the f-stop if you want nothing to be in focus you can put something like f1 and you will see 
that even the petal starts getting out of fo focus towards the edges. Or if you want everything in focus, you can put it to some absurdly high level like 128, but usually 4 is fine for something like this. Now basically for your render settings, I would suggest putting this to 256, uh, oops, 256 samples and enable denoising. So if you can, render on the GPU, if you don't, or if you can't, render on the CPU, uh, both should be fairly quick if you don't have too many of these. But yeah, this is how you make the glass with the uh, with the decal or the uh, the painted thing on top. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave a like or don't. Leave a comment or don't. Uh, do what you want. Now we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.